a little bit hard to make out there, but uh, you can just kind of tell that the slot continues to the same point on both of them, and that's where the end mill was snapping. So my son Andy came over, and we were talking about this, and he was throwing out ideas and stuff like that, and we got to, uh, I got to thinking about it, and you know, I, I hadn't looked at it with the end mill, and it's an 80 thou end mill uh, with a .625, 5 eighths of an inch flute length. Okay, so I'm trying to come in here and take this slot and take little circles and cut all the way through. This is a .081 inch drill bit, okay, so basically the same as the end mill. Well, I took the end mill and while I was talking to him, I, I got to looking at it and I realized that if I start at the top here and push down, I'm still holding the drill bit straight up, but you can see that the cut has quite a slope in it. Also, too, it's tight at the bottom. There's no wiggle there, whereas at the top here, there's wiggle. But if I come back here, there's I can't. There's no wiggle. So basically, what was happening, or this is what I'm assuming, what is what was happening is, I think I'm out of tram a little bit, okay? Because even after the last time I trammed it, you can still just feel. Uh, it's it's hard to tell, but there is just a little bit of ripple there, and so I think the end mill is leaning slightly like this. I think that just exacerbates the issue. So when it comes down in here, it drops down into the the five sixteen tool here, and it starts its uh, tool path. You know, starts making these little circles. I think what was happening is is the top was touching first, and it was working okay. Well then. The further down the flutes it it went, the more deflection there was. So finally to the point where you know it got that much deflection and there's no slop down there, it's tight, and so that basically tells me that the end of the tool, the tool was basically moving back and forth, but the bottom was staying in one spot. So it effectively made it a full width slot. Okay, the top is 0 .039. The top is 0 .0937. Okay, so there is definitely some some space there around the 80 thou end mill. But since there's no space at the bottom of the hole, it was it got to the point where it it was one. It was flexing. It was leaned over, bent. Okay. And then it got to the point halfway through the end mill's diameter that it was trying to make a 180 degree cut, you know, full engagement, full 180 degrees of engagement. And I think that's probably what caused it to snap. It had a full load at the bottom of the cutter, and the top was up here, and the top was moving around in a little circle. So it only engaged at the point of contact which was not a full 180 degrees, it was just, you know, a little bit. Uh, I think that's what's been snapping the end mills because I've had it happen multiple times in the same spot. I'm hoping that's what the deal is. I have remounted the, the uh, another end mill. I did not change tram because if I change tram then these four parts are toast, okay? And it's extremely slight, but I've moved it to where it starts the tool path over here, okay, and it'll start down in the in the hole here doing it, and it'll start with the bottom of the end mill, and then it'll work its way all the way in here and finally up this uh, step here and then get a full depth. Uh, I'm hoping, because if I run the end mill down in here now, a new end mill, and, and start with the same tool path I had, it comes down in here. Well, it's only cutting at the bottom, and it's opening it up. And then it's getting to the point where it, it goes through and it'll run from here, no problem. It'll go through all the rest of the tool path. But when it comes to the next part, it'll get this far and snap again. And that's happened like three or four times in a row. And at 20 something bucks a, an end mill, I've already gone through like five end mills. This is, the, this is either the fifth or the sixth one. I think it's the sixth one. So you might be able to, to tell here, if, if I hold the end mill Let's see. Oh. Oh, there's no real play at the bottom of that one. 
Okay, I was feeling this one, and I can hold the end mill against the back top edge there, and it'll rock. And maybe you can't see it at that angle there, but it rocks, telling me that there's lots of room at the bottom of that slot. It just dawned on me, though, that over here, I can't do... Oh, there's just a tiny, tiny bit. Well, this one, I, I put a new end mill in and I let it cut air through here just so I could watch the tool path. Well, that means that that end mill went down there and widened that up at the bottom quite a bit more. This one should have been widened out just fine by the contour tool path that goes around. So I'm not exactly sure why it's quite why it's so tight down there. On the end result, it really doesn't matter that the walls aren't parallel or whatever, or that it's tight. Uh, a screw goes in here and clamps this together. But I am concerned with that for the fact that I have 40 of these to make. And if it's that close at the bottom, being just uh, 80 thousandths wide, that's not good. Need new glasses, bad. Need new eyes. Need new body. Uh, what's puzzling me is why didn't the contour path that goes around here multiple times, why didn't it clean up the bottom, widen it out? There's some extra tool path in here, but I just couldn't seem to get rid of it, so I'll let it cut air through. light on low as a strobe effect. <laughs> okay, so basically it uh, tram didn't have anything to do with it. It it just it's just super tight at the bottom of the hole here. So basically it just gets to the point where it just it just gets too it just gets too damn tight down there and it makes it a a full width slot. This is a thou too wide, so it's probably part of the reason why it's so tight, but plenty of room up at the top. <laughs>